it's my supernatural pregnancy and childbirth and supernatural parenting. Um, I was encouraged to give this testimony because I think uh, our church is quite used to or acclimatized to operating with supernatural things. Ni lazima ni wafundishe kizungu leo sawa. So because of that, like there are things that you think they're normal and that everyone experiences it and everyone does it. Um, but I believe that as the word of God says that we overcame by the blood of the, world, of the lamb and the word of the testimony. So we have to testify because that's how we overcome. So I'll start from pregnancy to childbirth to parenting, okay? Uh, journey with me, Sawa. I'll re- I never desired to be pregnant because, yes, because I thought that pregnancy made women ugly. I had not come across a pretty pregnant woman. <laughs> and when I would watch movies and hear women cursing their husbands through labor, that was not something that was attractive to me. There was also all the bad reputation about like complications that pregnancy came with. And honestly, like, I didn't understand why, if pregnancy and birth was that bad, why were there seven billion people on the planet? Perhaps there's something that I was missing in this journey. So I'm not sure where down my journey, my mentality shifted about pregnancy. Maybe it came with when I was questioning why Christians were living such weak lives. Uh, Because the God that I saw in the Bible seemed to be more powerful than the God in our lives 2,000 years later. In this journey of questioning, one of the things that happened is that I came to the conclusion that, number one, poverty will never be my portion. Even if some of my friends and families believed that poverty and lack was God's way of humbling us. <laughs> Along the same lines, at some point I, always, I also knew in my heart that if and when I was to get pregnant, I would not have the average pregnant woman experience. So in 2020, I came across a story of about a woman who'd gone to hospital and given birth so quickly and pain-free, and my heart skipped a bit when I saw that story. I also wanted whatever she had, and I knew that this would be for me too. Later on that year, I met the woman in that post. It was Reverend Danu. (laughs) And and I was even more impressed with how she was parenting her less than one-year-old baby at that point, who could sit in her chair and eat by herself. I had never seen, I think she was nine months old by then, a nine month old child eating. I was just so shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, because I was used to people running after, mama, kujo ukule, baba, kujo ukule, you know. Yes, that one, I see you're used to it, Master Agnes also. (laughs) <laughs> yes, so um, now I met, I met the woman who was really Reverend Danu and she had really trained her child well and she would communicate when she was done eating. She and even her s- husband. <laughs> Especially her husband. <laughs> um, and like this baby would even like sleep on cue, like, okay, mama, it's time to sleep. And they take her to the bedroom and she just, and they leave her there like, what? I was so shocked when I saw that. Um, I was really mind blown when I saw that. And so when I got pregnant later on in 2020, I immediately downloaded the Supernatural Childbirth books and started reading and reading them like Bible. Now, um, I had the biblical backing after reading this book of why I had to have an above average pregnancy experience, a supernatural pregnancy and birth. A lot of the principles of supernatural pregnancy, they are foundational truths that apply to all areas of our lives. So in some way, God was also rewiring my faith for things that I had trusted for him to do with my life, not just pregnancy, but also other things in my life. So every single trimester of my pregnancy, I would Google all the issues of pregnancy, and then I would hold God accountable to making sure I did not experience any of it. So whereas a lot of women, In the first trimester, you experience nausea and vomiting and so many issues in the first trimester. I believe that that toilet bowl would not know my head in Jesus' name. (laughs) So there were days when like nausea would try to come up and I would rebuke it and I'd be like, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. 
And then I'm like, I'm not going to pay attention to you. And then Nausea, somehow it would just go. Not somehow, Jesus <laughs> would heal me and it would go, you know? Um, and like, for me really, and even as we listen through this story, like it's really a journey of faith where a lot of times I had to, you know when the Bible says like labor to enter into rest. Like I had to labor for my place of faith where a lot of times like, did I ever throw up here? Yeah, but I could count on one hand how many times it was. And on those times, it was when I was the least at the lowest in my faith, you know. And, and for me, um, throughout my pregnancy, like I never experienced like crazy cravings. I never asked for my Hindi choma at 2 a.m. <laughs> You know, like you, there are people who say, um, I think even Rev was just uh, t talking about this on, on Thursday during Precious Jewels. Like there's people who their husband have to sleep on the couch the whole nine, well, technically it's 10 months. It shall never be any of us. It shall not be. <laughs> the, people, the, the, the people this side want is. <laughs> Let me stand on this yeah. other side. <laughs> There is no life this side. That's, they want their <laughs> so husbands to. Oh, actually, most of them are husbands or husbands to be. I think they want to sleep on the couch. <laughs> you shall not allow. <laughs> They've been waiting for opportunity to sleep on the couch. That's hilarious. So yeah, so I never had any of these things, and I really did believe that the blood you can, you know. <laughs> yes, and I, I was, I really did believe that that's. God covering Spring chicken are beautiful. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. So yeah, so I was really shocked that uh not shocked but like it was a confirmation that I uh, I went against what I thought pregnancy was initially. Um and so my due date came and passed, but I also knew that my baby was going to come after his due date, so I wasn't anxious when the day passed. Um, and then about nine days later, uh, I think it was a uh, Saturday night, um, I remember waking up at like 4 a.m. feeling some discomfort for I could feel the contractions starting, um, but they were not painful. I continued timing. <laughs> now, I'm giving you guys some crash course on biology. I hope some of you are taking notes when the time comes, okay? <laughs> I, I started... <laughs> I was timing. <laughs> I was timing the contractions um, and the frequency. And then as the day progressed, then at around 11 a.m., I called the hospital just to ask them when I should come in. And they, were, they didn't believe them when I called them that I was in labor because I was just calm and asking for information. And they were like, ah, I mean, you can come and get checked, but like, you don't sound like a woman in labor. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, before we go on, I'll digress a bit about choosing the hospital. So I remember, I recall Ola telling me that we should go to the same hospital where I was going for the clinic. Um, <coughs> sorry, and I, I, did, I was not in agreement with that. Since in my mind, I had this picture of a huge private hospital room with a fancy bed and fancy machines and fancy doctors <laughs> and a fancy bill. <laughs> you know? So I, I created like a list of fancy hospitals that I thought I would want to go and get my baby in. And when I started researching them, like one by one, I was just crossing them off because there was just very bad reviews of other women experiences in those hospitals. And then also, I, I really didn't believe, I, at some point it was highly likely that you would end up in C-section and especially emergency C-section because that's what makes money for a lot of hospitals. Um, so I eventually felt like these fancy hospitals do not be aligned with my desire for a supernatural childbirth. So I obliged humbly to go to the non fans. Believe that your uchungu, uh, the pain of birth, is what helps advance the birthing process. But I was just like, ata mukikosa kunipea bado staski uchungu niko tu sawa. So now, um, now that Saturday afternoon, after I had called the hospital, I went to the hospital. Check me, and so that you can advise if I'm staying here or I'm going home. 
So when I stayed, um, when they when they when they conducted their test, they were like, "Oh, you're four centimeters dilated," and they were shocked because I was literally not looking like someone in labor at all. And then they said that I had to experience uchunguyam toto, and I just told them, "Please, that is not going to be my story." And I also asked them to. Uh, I, I hope I was respectful, but I did ask them, please don't use that word around me. If you're coming, <laughs> yes, yes, I was like, please, if you're coming to ask me about the progress, ask me, you can use the word contractions, that's scientific, it is natural for muscles to contract. <laughs> but don't ask me, you know. Um, and I'm glad that they also fell into alignment and they stopped asking Uchunguyam Toto. And then, so this was afternoon when I, when, when the nurses looked at me and they were like, is this your first baby? Oh, this child is not coming today. You just go back home, you come back tomorrow because first time babies, uh, you experience long labor. And I told them, it shall not be me. <laughs> this baby will be born tonight. So what happened was, um, I went home, got my stuff, took a bit of a walk, and then went back to the hospital at around 7 p.m. When they admitted me, I was around six centimeters, and they were shocked that the birth was progressing faster than they had imagined. Um, and then as the contractions continued coming, uh, sorry, okay, I lost where I was. So between 7 and 12 midnight, I was just walking around, because uh, advice to women, you're not supposed to be sleeping on your bed, you should be at least be active during labor. Um, and I was listening to music and dancing, and then at some point now when, because in as much as birth, supernatural birth is pain-free, it is also work. Birth is work because the same way you go to the gym and you work your muscles, it's the same way, even, probably even more. It's a lot of work. So at some point, I was in my zone where it was just me and the Holy Spirit, and I had downloaded an audiobook reader, and I was listening to the prayers and promises for supernatural childbirth. And like with every single surge, I knew that the Holy Spirit was right there with me. And every time I would feel the contractions, it was intense, but I would not feel the pain, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I didn't feel any pain. And the times where I would doubt that I didn't feel the pain, the next one would be painful. And then I'm like, okay, 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 I get it. I'm not feeling any pain, fine. You know, Holy Spirit, I believe you. Um, so, so then in the labor room, like your midwife, you know, uh, husband, your mother, your best friend, whoever it is, pray that they stand with you in your journey of faith. Um, so in this hospital, most men apparently, they would just drop off their women then come back one or two days later to pick up the wife and the baby. <laughs> Which was, <laughs> we shall not allow, <laughs> not in Ratsi. <laughs> Please. So, but I really thank God that Ola really supported me and he was praying over the baby and me, praying the music that I wanted to listen to. And even during delivery, he was there with me holding my hand. And when I gave birth to my baby at 1 a.m. after 45 minutes of pushing, he prayed over the baby immediately. He was born and dedicated him to God. It was such a sacred moment that I really cherish to date. Um, and even that night, he slept in the car to make sure that he was there through the night. And then in the morning, and the, the nurses and the sisters, it's a Catholic um, hospital, they were so shocked with the birth story and a man who stayed, like, they just kept asking, who are you people? <laughs> we will invite them. So I was, so I gave birth at 1 a.m. Um, I was discharged at 11 a.m. <laughs> because they were like, there's no reason for keeping you here, you, you're okay. If you want, you can go home. Um, and I remember my friends calling me, no, this was, because I gave birth Sunday night, so I went home Sunday at 11 a.m. So my friends called me like Sunday afternoon, they're like, hey, have you gotten the baby? Can we come see you in hospital? And I was like, oh, I'm at home. <laughs> you can come and see me there. Uh, what about the baby? I'm here with the baby. So they were so shocked how fast, like, it's like you go, <laughs> you pick your, bo your baby from a post office and you go back home. You know, that's how it felt to some. And it really felt like the verse in Exodus chapter 1, verse 19, that says the Hebrew women weren't like Egyptian women. They are vigorous. 
before the midwife can get there, they already had a baby, okay? Now, I hope you remember that I wanted a fancy hospital with a fancy bed and a fancy bill. Imagine how much we would have spent. Um, when we got, uh, when we were admitted, we paid a deposit of 13,000 shillings. And then the next day when we were being discharged, we were given back our change of about 7,000 shillings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because... It, it feels like you exploited the hospital. <laughs> it really does feel... <laughs> yeah, literally. So my expenses decreased because... <laughs> because it would have been probably like a 200, 300k type of situation, you know? Um, and we paid me less than, I think, six, less than 6,000 shillings. Um, and I also really got like very personalized attention from the nurses and the doctors because I was the only woman that night in the labor ward. And so I had like three nurses and one doctor and like, you know, like I, I was treated like, <laughs> like a princess really. That yeah. was fancy. <laughs> very fancy. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. So here he was, my 3.9, almost 4 kg baby, born supernaturally. <laughs> To be a testament, a testament that God truly meant when He said that, uh, when He wrote in Genesis, "Let us make man in our image and likeness," that pregnancy and birth is teaching us the beauty of co-creation with God, that it is a partnership of obeying His word to be fruitful and to multiply, and that there would be grace and victory throughout that process. Um, in Psalm chapter 127, verse 3, it says that no doubt children are a gift from God and the fruit of the womb is a divine reward. So I do believe that pregnant women can be gorgeous. Birth is not meant to be painful and you don't have to start repairing your marriage after you give birth because of how much you cast at your husband, okay? Yes. So that's my testimony on childbirth and pregnancy. Do I have time to continue? No. Can, on parenting. <laughs> this one is shorter. Are you sure? Yes. You think we don't want to have it on Monday, next Monday? It depends. You're the one who will tell me. Let's have it on Monday. Let's have okay. the other two. Yes. Well, Steve, where is Steve? Yes, guys, you, 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 you can't sit there like that. Quickly come, let's share. Pastor Joshua, there is a seat for you here. Ashes, why, 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 why is it that you? What are, eh? Pastor Joshua, we, we have a seat for you here. Right here. <laughs> How some of you are like, oh, what? wait till you become a pastor. Nini eh? <laughs> Okay, praise God. Amen. Praise God once more. Amen. Okay, uh, my name's go by Stephen Omondi. Wow. And this is my testimony. Yes. This is my, Let him share the testimony. This is my life-changing testimony. I hope I'll be strong enough to read it out because I've written it. Okay, I'll start. When I landed in this world, I found myself in a Christian family. In my childhood, up to my teenage life, I never understood what Christianity really meant, despite being the son of a prominent bishop. I used to go to church because it was like a culture that I was born and found that people normally go to church but never understood what it really was. I remember that I used to serve in church in various ways, but doing a lot of nasty stuff behind my parents' back. You also remember. <laughs> my friends, my friends knew me as a party organizer, like I used to organize a lot of parties in club. And back there, I'm son of a, a bishop. Yeah. 
when I needed money to do this nasty stuff, I could literally steal my dad's money in bank without his concern. I don't know if he never realized, but I could do it because I was covered by the eyes of the devil. The money that I got, I used to buy ladies alcohol. We could drink like no one's business. What followed after the alcohol's frequent fornication? That has been louder because of where God has brought all of us from. <laughs> you, you, you feel like, wow, my testimony, right? <laughs> I walked in each and every club, in each, each and every club in my hometown, Sierra, and I knew each and every corner of each club that was situated in that area. You know corners in clubs are for fornication. <laughs> they knew every corner in every club. Later on, my parents realized that I used to sneak out the house and go drink alcohol. They decided to be strict on me whereby before they could lock the door at night, they could confirm if I was really in my room. And like, they could really come to my room and confirm, is Steve asleep? They could not sleep if I was asleep. This was really praising me because I could receive frequent calls from my ladies. Any of the ladies here? <laughs> if God changed him, can't he change the ladies? Now, guys, let, let, let this, I told you, we have new people today. Behave, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't move out because of the lockdown that I had in the house. I decided to now come up with now a plan B of how to sneak out because the alcohol was really up into me and fornication was really into me. So I decided to go to my room in my shower room and remove the metallic grill that was in my shower room. so that it could give me access to move out. The grill took me one week to cut it off. But successfully, successfully I managed. Do you see how you can be committed for the devil? <laughs> yes. And you're told to usher in charge just to sweep or to, uh, but yeah, diligence to remove the grill. You know, by the time it takes a week, it means first you don't have a parcel because you're going to be hard. You get what I mean? Yes, you don't have a grinder. You're, you're using techniques that take one week. Uh, whatever he used. <laughs> hey. I managed to remove the grill. And I was so happy, I was so happy that now I could go outside and drink alcohol and fornicate like I used to do it. Before I could enjoy this for more, my parents got to realize that I had cut off the grill. And so this was, this was now, uh, I caught the grill when I was in Form 4. I did this when I was in high school. So when I was in Form 5, I caught the grill and went back to school after the holidays. Now, it was now a holiday. So when I came back for the next holiday, before I could sit for my KCSE, I found out that my parents realized that I had caught off the grill and they had replaced it with a huge one. Yeah. 
this was now a big grill that could not cut off. When I came back, my parents beated me like never before. They smashed my phone in front of me. I felt low at this moment, and I decided to take my life. I moved outside the house, bought poison, and moved to my dad's business premises. I mixed the poison and drank it all because I thought that my parents maybe had denied me my rights. To cut the grill. <laughs> Next, I found myself in hospital, in hospital bed, surrounded by a lot of people. Whom I saw first was my mom on tears, and I was also on tears because I realized that I had made a huge mistake. After that episode, I went back to school, did my KCAC, and got back home. Now, this was after Form 4. My mom announced in church that there is a man of God who will be coming to Seattle to bring revival. It was, it was the Ignite Siaya by Reverend. <laughs> by Reverend Benjamin Kasanja. <laughs> who is our pastor here. My mom told me that you'll accompany, you will accompany me to this meeting because uh, when I, I was in Sia, I used to drive her whenever he could go. So I drove her to that place. Never knew that this was going to be my turning point. Wow. In the prayers, I just felt like something was came in from my head to toe. And uh, when I went back home, I told my mom that I've just, I felt something during the service that just came from the top of my head to the, uh, to the feet. And I told my mom that uh, I would like to join this church when I come to Nairobi. So I told my mom that when I move to Nairobi for my studies, I would like to fellowship in this church of this pastor. So I came to Nairobi in September 2022. I joined Rat C. I joined, I, joined, I joined Red Sea on 25th of September, 2022. And on that very Sunday, I gave my life to Christ. Yeah. On the second Sunday, I spoke in tongues. Something that I didn't know that I could ever do in my life. I, do, I just saw people, men of God, speaking in tongues. That... <laughs> Guys, don't scare the people testifying. Let's... I, I need to preach the word, yeah? Yes, we, we should save time. That was my turning point. Since that day, my life totally changed, totally changed. From that September 25th, 2022, the time I joined Red Sea, I never drink, I don't drink. I don't hope from one club to another. Like I don't fornicate. I receive a lot of favors from a lot of people, some that I don't even know. I'm a student and my leadership in school has been elevated to another level. Very nice. Amen. In my institution, I'm a great influencer. Uh, like uh, some previous months ago, I got to, I found myself in a certain meeting 
that was hosted by top delegates of the government. And people who are getting there, people who are having big cars, but for me, I was the, I was the only student who was there in front of these big people. And this was like, this was like my one life opportunity that I had. So this happened uh, last Monday after the fitness in the ward. I was captured in the power of the Holy Spirit. So when I went, I went, I went home, I decided to go and spend a night in my aunt's place. So pastors has been preaching about taking responsibility. So my aunt told me that my cousin, my younger cousin, she's around five years old. She told me that my cousin is really sick. Uh, so this was in the morning when I wanted to now to move to the institution to school. I told my aunt that uh, bring my cousin, I want to pray to, to her so that he can get healed. She gave me excuse that uh, my cousin is asleep, but, but that she cannot wake her up. I told her that now go and bring, bring my cousin, I want to pray to her. She brought my cousin, I prayed for her, and I told her that you should not take him to the hospital because she is now healed. When I came back in the evening to confirm, I found that my cousin was playing. When I asked my, uh, my aunt, she told me that my cousin is well, that she's healed, and I was so happy. Like, I've never prayed to someone, but this really motivated me because I prayed to someone and she got healed, and I was just amazed. Amen. I receive a lot of gifts and surprises from a lot of people. If it, if it were not for Pastor Benjamin Kasanja and his team to come for Ignite Siaya, I couldn't be here right now. I could be. In fact, I had told myself that when I come to Nairobi, I'll be far away from my mom. And now I could get opportunity to do a lot of nasty stuff. Because I remember my mom told me to go to the institution that was around here, but I told her that that won't be possible. I'm going to Nairobi. Because I knew that if I come to Nairobi... Nairobi became nearer all of a sudden. I knew that if I came to Nairobi, I'm going to be free and fornicate, but it You're turned out... You're now totally free. You're free from fornication, different. free from drinking. So right now I'm a free man and I really thank and appreciate the Red Sea for reaching us in Sia because that's been my turning point. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? And you see what's amazing is us seeing all these college students that are getting transformed. And if you are a parent and you're watching, and you're telling your college students not to come for such things. You're sending them to the bar. You're sending them to the club. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we've had parents who say, why do you spend the whole Sunday at church? Why do you go to church on Monday? But here's such a testimony. Yeah? Many of these students have come from clubs, from bars. And they used to go every day after lectures. Now they are going to church three times a week. And not a whole day, and the parent feels like that is too bad. You will lose them. You will lose them. You better allow them to serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. Powerful testimony. His mom is a bishop in Sia. She hosted us the last day in Sia. She hosted us the whole team for a dinner. Awesome food. Man. She is reaping as a mother. Hallelujah. Thank you for that testimony. We, we, we have another testimony of healing. Last, on, Monday, on Monday, I gave a word of knowledge about somebody who had a headache from the nose, and they wrote to us and said she was here. Where is she? Oh, yeah, yes, she's here. They told me we, we had that video. You, you, you play that video and we see. When you came 
with a headache on your left side, a serious headache on your left side, and it was like it was. Now there's somebody you came with a headache on your left side, a serious headache on your left side, and it was like it was shooting from the nose. Either you've had a blocked no nose, but from the left side. Who is that? You had that, yeah? You're the one. I command it to leave you right now and never to come back. You are free. In Jesus' name. June, July, you will be whole. You will not be sick in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I thank God for the opportunity to stand here. God has really changed me. Believe me when I say that. Um, as I was growing up, also I've been raised by pastors. And uh, I, I always knew I was born again, but deep down, I knew there's a deliverance I needed. I was born again, but I was, but I was not delivered. So all through my life, I was always facing rejection from teachers, fellow students. As I was growing up, I, I always like wished, like when you were asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was saying I want to be a teacher. And uh, there's a lady who stood here and I was so happy to hear that there was a teacher. There's a lady, some, yes, that one over there. So, uh, stand up, the lady, stand up. <laughs> so, Yes, I was so happy, like I was really happy when she said she got her, her number. So, but this changed with time because the way I saw teachers treating me, I said like when I, when I grow up and uh, I get to be, to be in the, amidst children, I'll, I, will, I will like pay back. <laughs> and that was not nice. So right now maybe I'm in a different career, but I thank God but that on 8th, May, on 8th May this year was my first time at here in Fitness in the Word. And uh, I was sitting right there and the pastor was, minister, was ministering. Yeah, right behind Agnes. So pastor was ministering. Pastor was ministering and he was, calling, he was saying numbers that I'm, I'm counting from seven to one and uh, the spirit the spirit will like will overflow then he counted three to one and i said that right now when the pastor is saying this i'm surrendering all my burdens i'm leaving everything behind and i'm and i'm taking responsibility over my family my mom is a pastor and she prays every night she really has like long prayers but she was sick pastors so, so I was always in question, why, why does it always have to be like this? So as I was right there, I was standing in the place for my mom, for my mom's healing. I was standing in place for my brother who has sickle cell anemia. And uh, for anything that has been spoken against my family, that right now, as the, as the pastor was counting, it's coming to an end. And... Uh, I have never felt the way I felt that time. How did you feel? What happened? Okay, so there was uh, there was a really like a really shining light to my eyes, and uh, as Pastor said, you will know your purpose. The light was written intercessory, so I really thank God since that day because I was once listening to a sermon end. This someone was saying, when because we are we, we are used to our parents being intercessors when they are away, who will stand in their place? So I, I said I will take the chance and I will be the intercessor for my family. And because of that, 
healing is healing is restored in my family. All curses are broken. And uh, just that same week, as I went home, my mom was is usually used to wearing some heavy socks that uh, she says helps her from pain. So that time she was no longer wearing them. And she says that any time she's wearing her socks, it's just because of the cold. It's not because she has pain. Amen. She says, like, like right now, I, I don't feel any pain. Even in my back, I don't feel any pain. So that, that same week after fitness in the world, I took my daughter and my brother to Ratsi, the Go Church. It was the, it was the children's Sunday. So as they were praying, I told my brother to go in front. He's 13 years. And uh, my daughter too. So as they were praying, I was, I was like, at the same time as pastor was praying, I was saying, breakthrough will happen for my brother. His, uh, his school fees will be provided. My daughter will not lack as, as, uh, as she goes to school. So when I got home this week from fitness in the world, my my brother told me he became the third one and she, he has been missing school because of the series once in a while he gets ill so he became the third, the, uh, third place and it was a really perf a really great performance be, uh, like, not like before so I, I really thanked God for that and also the last thing uh, Monday, the last migraine Monday. I, I was having a migraine and this migraine was be, was there for like two years. It has been there for two years. So it, when it when my head starts paining, it pains for like two four hours nonstop, and I can't even move. I have to like take a, a place and rest my head. But then, as as a pastor was ministering still last week, I was sitting right there and I I was holding my hand on on my head. And I was praying that this migraine is going away. So when Pastor called out, I, I really rushed. I didn't even wait for him to finish. And when he laid his hand on me, on my head, I was completely healed. And I have not Amen. and I have not experienced any migraines ever since. So uh, and also anytime Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Benjamin has been here. Uh, anything he says mostly hits hits me like really hard. He he also prophesied like he prophesied some days ago that there's a woman who is going through a court case, and I I thought when I was outside that my mom, being the firstborn in her family. She has been really having a court case uh, because of the land, the sharing land from, the gran from our grandfathers. And I'm really praying that when the, prophecy when, the prophe when the prophecy came, I know that God has spoken and God has done, has, has settled everything. And I don't have to worry about anything. And uh, also, this is my last testimony because of time. <laughs> So I was, I, was, I was going through my Instagram page and last year, okay, 2nd May was my birthday and then I was transformed seven days later. Last, last year, the same time when it was my birthday, then some days later, I was like really, really drunk and wasted. And I knew this is not me. I was never fond of alcohol or anything. And I knew this is not this is not something I like doing. And I was like really praying for a miracle. And a miracle I came to 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 see, to experience exactly one year down the line. And I'm really thankful to God. Amen. And he will continue reviving me. Amen. Amen. What's your name? Your My name? name is Naila Hanjila. Naila? Or Mujivane. Are you her sisters? Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Naila. Thank you. Isn't Jesus wonderful? 
hear all those testimonies from supernatural childbirth. And I'm sure Itago is going to continue her testimony next week. Itago told us when she, when she just came to Ratsi, she just used to feel like this is too much. Like, why are people screaming? Why are people falling under the power? Why can't church be organized? Now she's in hospital telling the doctors, don't use that word. <laughs> you see, you hang around for a short while, you'll become like us. You'll start making noise also. Hallelujah. But you, you know, but it's not about making noise, it's not about falling, it's not about screaming. It's about what you're hearing. Lives that are being transformed. At times, we may not understand fully the nitty gritties of the methods of God, but we see the fruit. I'm sure Jesus took mud and put on some guy's eyes. When we were growing up, we were told mud causes trachoma. Was it called trachoma? How many of you studied eye diseases? Hygiene. So I told, yeah, don't allow soil to get into your eyes. Now this guy comes with eyes that are sick and Jesus takes the very soil and puts on the eyes. With his pito in it, you know, uh, saliva carries whatever it carries. We don't know if whatever Jesus was carrying, he used to walk everywhere. But, <laughs> but you know, so we can get stuck on why did he do that? Is he a man of God? Why did he take soil? Why didn't he? Did the man get healed? Did the man encounter God? Praise the Lord. Yeah, even me as a pastor up to today, there are, there are times I see the power of God manifest and in a way I have never seen. There are things I see and I'm like, God, why did it have to be that way? <laughs> you get what I mean? Yes, there is a time. When we went for Ignite, I think it was in Kisum and what? You see now these bishops that are seated at the front normally. You see the power of God touches a bishop and the bishop is spinning and I'm like, God, he's a bishop. For your sake, he's a bishop, he's a bishop. Touch the others, not. But you know, the bishop has a testimony. His church was transformed. So sometimes, sometimes we need to let go. We need to, to relax, let go, let go, and then let go do the work. Praise the Lord. But we serve a very wonderful God. God is touched, and we've cut testimonies short. Sure, there are many more testimonies uh, because these ones were very long today. We are stopping at three. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's get up on our feet and sing to this Jesus one more time. Let's let's sing to Him like you now understand. And if you're believing Him for anything, yours is in the pipeline. Praise the Lord. He is the same God. He's not a God of partiality. Hallelujah.
testimonies are for you. The songs are for you. The stories we tell you are for you. We love you, Jesus. We can never stop. We can never have enough of you. We can never have enough of you. We love you, Jesus. We can never have enough of you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, with those hands lifted still, I want to listen to me, to be silent. There are a few of you, you're serving God, you love God, but you know that that is not where you're meant to be. You know that you've even done better before. You've been more passionate than that before. God is anointing you right now and is bringing you back to a place of passion, serving him with enthusiasm, a place where you're not pushed at all. Yes. Is bring you back to that place. Some of you, you left that place because of things that happened in your life. 
you know there are ladies you got pregnant and then the fire just went down because you are pregnant you're not married people talked about you and you just grew cold right now he's anointing you afresh a fresh fire from today from today you will serve him take it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus from the top of your head to the soles of your feet a fresh fire a fresh fire a fresh fire you will be an ambassador you will be a servant of the most high God you will not settle for the status quo people may say you are you're passionate but you know that there is more people around you may think that's too much but you know that there is more than that yes he's anointing you right now he's anointing you right now yes you will manifest the gifts of the Holy Ghost you will prophesy you will heal the sick yes you will preach the gospel you will carry his power even at your place of work a new start a new start today a new start allow to be consumed by him today yes that the next time you sing this song there will be so much meaning you get from it yes that you love him bring her here let me lay hands on her yes take it in the name of Jesus never again a fresh start in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we love you Jesus we will never stop our lives are for you we have given ourselves for you we are okay with being ridiculed for you. We are okay with being called names for you. We are okay to be called crazy. That we love you. We cannot help it. We love you. You first loved us. You gave your life for us. We that were once not a people, like we've had testimonies, lost in drunkenness, lost in fornication, lost in drugs, in theft, in disobedience, and now are the children of God and now priests and kings we are now a royal priesthood a peculiar people that it is through us that you display your splendor thank you for loving us thank you for choosing us we give ourselves to you we surrender to you that our lives will count for you daily daily for you we love you Jesus we will never stop we love you Jesus we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, let's clap for him if you're clapping for him, if you're celebrating. sick I want you to put your hand on your head you're sick have any terminal illness any put that hand on your head right now the healing power of God is coming upon you you'll be able to share that testimony on Monday right now whatever that doctors may have said is way inferior to that name that's above every other name it is way inferior to what Jesus did on that cross right now that sickness that pain that condition I curse it to the root in the name of Jesus Christ yes internal organs 
head, veins, nerves, whatever it is, blood disease, right now I curse you to the root and I speak the life of God, the life of Jesus, the life of Jesus. I speak the life of Jesus to flow through your entire body. Yes, the Zoe life, the life that he's called you to. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, sickness, you are illegal here. These are God's children. These belong to God. In the name of Jesus, I don't care how long it has been in your life. Today it is cursed to the root. It dries up from the root. In the name of Jesus, I speak total freedom, total liberty. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can have our seats. Amen. Thank you, Father. Worship team, thank you so much. You can have our seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? We serve a wonderful Jesus. We serve a wonderful God. We love him. And like we are singing, we love him. We will never stop. Praise the Lord. We will never stop loving him. We love him. Because he has first loved us. He's the one who first loved us. And we've been talking about taking responsibility. There are a number of things that we've been saying. If you're coming here, we say this is fitness in the world. Boot camp for revivalists. Praise the Lord. You come. We were told what a boot camp is. A boot camp is a, a short, it's like a short course. A short term, but intense it prepares people to go for battle. It prepares people to go for, for, for work. And we come here every Monday to be prepared. And like I say, there are many testimonies. Maybe we'll hear one just testimony again. But uh, people are getting, people are, are taking this seriously and they're going and having impact there. Your purpose of coming is not so that we have somebody on your seat. Your purpose of coming is so that you get charged to go and possess your world. Praise the Lord. You go and cause impact. Go heal those sick people that we may never reach. Praise the Lord. Cause your office to serve the Lord. Cause your family to love the Lord. You are an ambassador. God thinks kingdom. On the first day, I was telling us, think about a perfect world. Praise the Lord. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, they had not fallen. What would be your purpose on earth? Now that makes you think so different about Christianity. Because many times we think about Christianity as a place to just come and be forgiven so that one day we go to heaven. We, we come and, oh God, I'm good. Today I've said my prayers. I have given my tithe. So it, it, it's, it's, it's like every day we are, we, 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 we are, we, we are trying to be preserved. We are, like that's what Christianity is all about. No. And Jesus stressed what Christianity was about when he said, Occupy until I come. Because when he had created them, he had created them in a perfect world. So if the fall had not happened, what, what, what would they be here for? What, would, be we, what we, would we be here for? It would be to occupy, to extend his kingdom. He created heaven and decided to stay in heaven. And the earth he gave to the sons of men, that his kingdom should continue. Hallelujah. And that is why he dealt with sin so seriously. Actually, if you look at the payment of sin, it is like he overpaid. Because he didn't want it to be in the way at all. He didn't want it to be in the way of his kingdom expanding. That is what the devil thought he would throw in the way. And God would not have any more people to use to expand. That is why he created human beings in his image, in his likeness. All the other animals, he said, let there be this, uh, out of the ground brought fruits, plants and what? Uh, the, f the fish were brought forth from the water, but when it came to man, he created man before he formed man. So when you read in Genesis chapter 2, he says, let us make man in our own image. Then he said, he created him male and, he created them male and female. Then when you go on, he said, now, 
He formed man. He formed him from the dust. He created him before he formed him in the dust. And he gave him his image. Because you see, if you're going to, if somebody is going, if you're going to, to, to do what? Many of you are in business. If you're franchising, what do you do? You make those people like you, isn't it? Yeah. You, you, you train them, you, you bring them and you train them. This is how we are meant to dress. This is the language we use. This is, so that is why you will go to, 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 to Coca-Cola worldwide. It does not matter the investors, the what. There are similarities you'll find as long as it is Coca-Cola. Because if you're going to represent us in Kenya, because what happens in Kenya, it, 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 it still represents Coca-Cola in where? Atlanta. It's Atlanta. Where is Coca-Cola? Yeah? Georgia. Yeah, Atlanta. Is that where Coca-Cola is? Or oh, it's in industrial area? <laughs> yeah, Karyobangi South. Okay. Yes, but it will reflect everywhere. You get what I mean? You want to you you, you want you want to go to a subway in Nairobi, go to a subway in Canada, go to a subway in USA, go to a subway in South Africa, and feel like they are the same. You get what I mean? That is the desire of whoever started the franchise. That's their desire. At what, what what are people doing with my business down there? Even if they paid for the franchise, it is still his business. Praise the Lord. And that is why it is hard for them to just go to some places the, the bigger the franchise is. Now, God wanted a franchise on earth. He says, we have to create them in our image. Just think about redemption. Think about when Jesus came and died for us. Look at some of the things that came with redemption. If you think business, you seriously realize that, yeah, he was actually extending a branch here. You get what I mean? We got born again. He took away our heart. He gave us another one. <laughs> he doesn't want the one that doesn't beat like his. Yes. <laughs> yeah? He took away our mind. He says, now you have the mind of Christ. Yeah? He says he was raised and he went and sat at the right hand of the Father. But he raised us with him, in him. He invited us to his level. That's why he gave us his mind. To be able to reason at that level. That is why when some businesses are going to be open, they say, oh, we want you to manage this business, or not, but we have to first send you for training. Why? Because they want to give you their mind. They want to give you their heart. It's true you've been running some business very well, but our standards are very different and they're higher. They say, we want to start a business in Kenya. We've chosen some people that we will take for training. So they will take you to another place, take you for training, rigorous training. You go through it, and by the time you come back, you speak their language. And that is what he's done to us. Why? So that his kingdom, if getting born again was all about going to heaven, I'm telling you, we would be going right here to the altar. He would be taking us right here. Just um, Jesus, I am yours. I surrender to you. Whew, you're raptured. But why does he leave you here? He was with the disciples. He could have gone with them. But he said, these, I'm leaving them in the world. They are not of this world, but I'm leaving them here. Why? Because he wants territory. He wants to colonize. And why? Because that was his first intention when he was creating man. That was the original intent. And the devil came in. And that's why when the devil came to Jesus and said, I will give you the kingdoms of this world, Jesus did not object. That, that statement, the facts that the devil was stating. Yes, what he refused was to submit to the devil. But he didn't refuse that the kingdoms belong to the devil. He didn't tell him, you don't have any kingdoms. No, he had them. Adam had given to him. He had surrendered, given him the key. Yes. And Jesus came and he dealt with that on the cross and he went to Hades and he got back the keys legally. Now, he left us here to enforce that. He left us here to be the enforcers of that. It is there in the legal realm. Most of the things that we believe, especially as the New Testament church, are things that are legal. They already passed. But you see, legal doesn't mean that you're experiencing it. Legal doesn't mean it's vital. Praise the Lord. 
I'm a foreigner in this nation. Anyone that works in Nyayo House? Let me tell you, true story. I've gone to Nyayo House. And I'm like this and this and this and this and this. So I qualify for permanent residence. Say, so, oh, yeah, it's on paper like that, but this is Kenya. Yes. How, are you, how do you help me and I'll also help you? Legally, I qualify everything. You get what I mean? Yeah. So legally, by his stripes you were healed. Legally, the keys were taken from the devil. And they are ours. But you see, we have to enforce it. Now that is where faith comes in. And when he says the fight of faith, the fight of faith is to fight to believe what has been accomplished. That's the fight of faith. Fight of faith is not sweating. Fight of faith is not what we call spiritual warfare nowadays. Praise the Lord. We just did a series here on the hoax of spiritual warfare. Ah, the videos are not yet on YouTube. Is it there? The whole series. It's not there. We should upload, we should upload. But they're on the podcast. Are they on the podcast? Aish. We should upload the hoax of spiritual warfare. We should really upload. By the way, if you're there complaining that they're not there and you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, pull out your phone right now. You, you, don't, you don't have a right to complain and you've not subscribed. You don't have a... Pull out your... In churches, they have posters where they say phones must be off now for us. Your phone must be on right now for the purpose of subscribing. Go to YouTube, Benjamin Kasancha, that's the channel. Go there and subscribe right now. Yes, it's like that. Go there and subscribe right now. Even you who is watching, especially you who watch like spies. Yeah, don't, don't comment, don't like, but at least subscribe. Yes, you people, secret service. You meet them in the mall and they're like, I follow. <laughs> I, I see you. I know you. You don't know me, but I know you. You Pastor Benjamin. You, 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 you watch like that. You never give offering. You never support. At least subscribe. As, yeah, some of the guilt will leave you the moment you subscribe. They watch Nicodemusly. Yes, you who watches Nicodemusly. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of what we call spiritual warfare is not really, spiritual warfare is not really, oh, there is a demon here. Oh, there is a demon here. What shall we do? Oh, we are, being, we, are, we, we are being bound by this. We can't go here. We can't. Most of those things are, you know how we get into error is by glorifying our experiences over the word of God. Yes. Doctrine is not built on experience, no matter the experience. And like I'm saying, I've had a number of experiences. I've had encounters. It would be so sad for me to come and establish them as doctrine. So a lot of what we see propagated in spiritual warfare was genuine experience. The problem is when it was taught as doctrine. Yes. Maybe God told somebody, you point to the roof, point to the sky and speak against the principality in this area. You get what I mean? And they did, and they saw results. And they came and told that that's how spiritual warfare is done. Now, that's so wrong. That's very wrong. It's not consistent with scripture. It is an experience, but it's not consistent with scripture. You know, there are even experiences that are in scripture but can't be taught as doctrine. Like the one I just gave you earlier, I said Jesus put mud on somebody's eyes. Do you know why it can't become doctrine? Yeah, it's just one isolated case. It is, in theology, some of those books you call them narratives. It's not a doctrine, it's not, it's not teaching foundations, it's not establishing. So if you say, but Jesus did this, let me do that. And don't you see that that is why Jesus, almost everyone he healed, he healed them in a different way. One thing that he repeated at least more than once was, your faith has made you whole. But the other, he put mud on this one. Another blind guy came. He just touched his eyes. Another. So the problem is when we make this doctrine. And you see, it's, it's, it's dangerous. So a lot of what we have as spiritual warfare has come from there. It has come from there. 
I had got into that, especially when I was in high school. A lot of things. Or oh, if you see somebody dressed like this, or oh, you see. And some of them come from genuine experiences. It is just like there we have the constitution of this nation. But they are isolated cases. They are somehow still covered in the constitution, but you can't make it every day. We had a lockdown. It was illegal to walk, a curfew, illegal to walk past seven or past whatever time they had said. And you see, it is catered for in the constitution. Uh, the president is given some power to make some decrees and what, but it is that. Imagine if you're walking today and you are arrested and somebody says it is past seven. Wasn't it declared sometime? But you see, that was a one experience. Go back to the constitution. So there are experiences we are going to have, but it is not necessarily, it is not necessarily doctrine. And so that is dangerous. And, 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 and when we make, and what you realize about many of these experiences, they make the cross of Christ void of its power. Most of them. Because when you hear a lot of teaching on spiritual warfare, most of it exalts what the devil does more than what Jesus did. Yes. It, it makes a Christian, Paul tells Timothy not to minister questions. A Christian moves with questions. It's like the other day we were singing, we, 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 everything is under our feet, the devil is under our feet. We were saying he made a public spectacle of them, he triumphed over them. And then this time we are saying, hey, I'm telling you, if you're not serious, the devil will kill you. So like the other day we were singing like he was defeated. This day I'm being told he will. Now a Christian leaves with more questions ministered to them. Now that's why you should rightly divide the word of truth. You should understand the word so that you don't minister questions to people. You don't minister questions to people. Yeah. People leave very confused. The other day I was told I'm more than a conqueror. Now, the other time I was told there is a certain level I must reach to deal with some demons. You see? And I was told you are a child of God. No demon can stand against you. He gave you power to cast out demons. Then you sat and you are told a very hard name of a demon. And you see, they normally, because they want them to be intimidating. Hey, bring, there is a demon called this and this. And you're like, wow. Even saying the name is not easy. Just like you, 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 any of you that has a lisp tongue? Lisp tongue. You don't want to wave? Mine changed, but it used to be there. Like, it's very subtle now, but when I was young, because I had a, a gap here, so it was, it was a bit, but it's, it's not there. But I'm like, who came up with the word lisp? That the people being described can't even say the word. Like, you want to describe them, can't you get, <laughs> couldn't you get a word they can also say? <laughs> that is intimidation. That's, that's, that's unfair. <laughs> that's the way these white people wrote our history. They came and wrote history that favors them. They wrote about us as primitive people people who had not discovered the rivers we were swimming in, people who had not discovered the mountains we were hunting on. Hunting on. Yes, they, they, they wrote through their eyes. Then they tell us, this is African history, study it. Written by a guy who was in Africa for five years. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that is what is done. The devil is communicated in a way and you're like, so that is wrong. That is not spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is fighting the fight of faith. It is to fight to believe what Jesus has said and what he's done amidst all contrary happenings and experiences. That is it. You had the testimony. Did, did these people went to Gansi, did they share the testimony of the, the guy, Baraka? They didn't share. Aish. Kwanini. They said it's long. For that. Yeah? Oh, okay. Maybe they are, they are still preparing for another later. So, so we will wait. <laughs> but uh, the bride called me the first day they went. This guy was tied, tied on chains. He's chained for seven months. 
That's where he goes to toilet. That's where he eats. Food is brought to him. Because of the witchcraft there. So they went the first day. Prayed. Cast out demons. And the guy laughed at them. Mm. So bright calls me like, Pastor, hey, now we don't even know what to do. We've, <laughs> we, we've prayed. We've done everything. And nothing has happened. So I asked him, why do you say nothing has happened? You get what I mean? Why do you say nothing has happened? The just shall live by faith, not by their physical senses. Why do you say nothing has happened? Because there is an expectation that is carnal that we are used to. As charismatic and Pentecostal, you expected him to shake a lot and shake and shake and shake. And. Yes. Yeah. Now the devil realized actually that's what you expect. But if he stays calm and he laughs, you will say nothing happened. But you know what you should ask yourself? Why wasn't he laughing at you until you started casting them out? It means something is happening. And many times that is what happens. I've seen that even with sickness. Like one of the testimonies they were sharing about someone that got healed, had pain somewhere. Then when he started praying, the pain went to another place. Many times that happens, especially with witchcraft. And the sickness is demonic. And many times I've seen that. Many t- There's a time we, were, we went to Nakuru to pray for somebody in hospital. As with Jesse, Jesse Muhia. Went to, 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 we went to pray for another, but he had a roommate, and the roommate had a, the roommate in that hospital was sick, and he's like, the doctors can't find what's wrong with me. An elderly man. He's like, they can't find what's wrong with me, but I have this pain. And so I told Jesse, let's pray for him. So when he started praying for him, we were like, because he was like, it is the headache. He's like, hey, now it's the back, but the headache is gone. Now it's this, now. Because you're hitting the demon. So at times it looks like nothing is happening because you quit. You don't know to fight the fight of faith. Now the fight of faith is you believe what Christ has done amidst the contrary experiences. That is why it says that just shall live by faith and not by their physical. Yeah, I said. There are many people that have prayed for and I didn't see anything happen and yet they came with a serious testimony. You get what I mean? But there has nothing. There is a time. This encouraged me. I read Healing the Sick by T.L. Osborne. Now, if you have the soft copy, it has no testimonies. If you have the hard copy, the last chapter, they are just story after story. So he prayed for this deaf guy. Yeah, he was deaf and mute. He prayed for him, a boy, 13 year old in Jamaica. Came up, he prayed for him. And the boy started hearing, but he could not talk. So he went back to the line to pray for him again. And T.L. Osborne wrote on a cheat for him. He wrote a note and gave him. And he told him, the devil knows my voice. And the devil hears me. And he knows to leave when I tell him to leave. So he gave him the note and, told, the, the, and said, so when I laid hands on you and prayed for you, the devil left. And the boy went with that note. And the boy woke up in the morning talking. And he joined music school. He started playing the clarinet. And he ended up being one of the top clarinet players in Jamaica. You get what I mean? So now, hearing that testimony, I was a high school student. I'm reading because I'm, I'm following. This is, this is my hero of faith. So I'm like, wow. This man really, really believes. He really enforces what happened legally. He has rebuked the damp and deaf spirit and is so sure it has heard and it has left. He's not moved by what the boy is doing. There's another time I went to a place, I went with Bishop Isaiah to pray for some man that was, that was mad in Uganda. And he laid hands on this man, prayed for this man, and we just left. And I'm thinking... Are you not waiting to test him? Are you not waiting to see? Of course we test people many times when we pray here. But some of the testimonies we hear later. 
Because what we are dealing with, you see, we call it spiritual warfare. It is spiritual. It is not physical. Now, at times, God will lead you. There are physical things that we do. There are visible things that we do in obedience to spiritual instruction. Now, the problem is when we, we, we reverse that. We want to do the physical, and we want the spiritual to obey the physical. You get what I mean? Yes. So because you are told, you know, there are times, the, 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 the times I've cast out demons, there are times I've, I've cast out demons from people, and God told me, step on the toe. And I stepped on the person's toe. And the manifestation just, and he got free. So imagine if every time I see somebody who is possessed, I go and step on that toe. Go step on that toe. You know, we are laughing, but that is what the charismatic Pentecostal church does. Yes. We've made everything a formula. This is how you cast out demons. This is how you do this. This is how you do this. So something that began from the... Sp and that is what the Pharisees did. He said, you've made the word of none effect because of your traditions. You took the word of God and put tradition to it. And now, because you see that the, the, the word will come with norms. Religion means norms. Yeah? Religion is the word din. Yeah? Arabic is din. I think even what? Hebrew, something close to that. Din. That's religion. There's nothing wrong with religion. But religion, void of power, no, that's where, religion is the way you do things. That's religion. So we may say, oh, we are not religious, but we are religious. We come here every Monday. That's religion. That's our norm. We come here every Monday. You get what I mean? We, we, there, there is our way we do things when somebody comes and says, oh, you do, oh, you must be from Ratsi. You do like this and this. So that means we have religion. James talks about good religion. True religion is this. So the problem with religion is when it is void of the spirit. It is like a gun with shells. It's like a gun, bonoko. It's bonoko, yeah. You have empty rounds. So we pick something that was very powerful, but we run with a shell and we leave the bullet. That's what we do. So it's true. I had Archbishop Benson Idahosa before he took over in Benin City, God spoke to him and told him to go and do a prayer walk there. Every other time, calling that city to God, calling that, and he did that, he did that, he did that, he did that, and he spoke. And there used to be cannibalism, human sacrifice, and it was a dangerous place. He could be killed, and he did that. You, you get what I mean? Now, what he did was religion, but there was spirit behind it. Now, today, somebody will go and pick what he did without the spirit. He said, do you know, this is what Archbishop Benzoni Dahosa did. Then come, let's do that in Nairobi. Hey, you do that in Nairobi. And Nairobi is not changing. Nairobi is not changing. Nairobi is not, you're wondering why Nairobi is not changing. But you get to the word. And that is why it is so easy. Many times when you go, people want to explain, Pastor, this person is possessed. This is, you know, it's because of witchcraft. and all. Many times I don't want to hear. Now, there are times God has told me to ask. There are times God has revealed to me. You know what I mean? There are times I'm praying for someone and God has revealed to me. You need to forgive. It's, it's, it's your mom that did this and this and there is a purpose. But many times when we want to, I normally ask people, so why should we hear all that was done for this person to get in this state? I'm coming in the name of Jesus. You, you get what I mean? Whether his spirit was tied against a tree, whether his toe was buried where, whether his hair was... I'm coming in... I'm, it's the same weapon I'm going to use. I'm not going to change my weapon just because his vest was tied in a certain mountain. I'm, I'm coming to cast out the demons in the name of Jesus. The name that's above whatever they did. And you see, you stick to it you, until you believe it. I've told us like one time that if you have a key, yes, house key. You know, some houses don't use keys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> house key. But... You see, when you get, when you get, okay, when you get to your house, <laughs> padlock. <laughs> now, when you put the key in and it does not open, 
Why do you put the key back? Because you believe that it's the right key. You will even try six times. Because you believe it's the right key. Now many Christians come and they, they will come and plant a church. And because it is not growing, they will say, oh, there is a principality here fighting us as a church. They unplant. You didn't believe the key. You didn't believe you had the right key. Otherwise, you would push it in again. You would push it in again. You would fight the fight of faith. And I was telling us that we should learn from the Catholic church. Places that Pentecostals fear, there is a Catholic church. Yes. Mm. Pentecostals want to only send the prayer warriors there. Catholic people have just gone with food. They are looking to make bow hole. They are not waking up at five to pray till morning. They are, they are thriving. The, the church is growing. Actually, when you go there, they tell you the only church here is Catholic. And for you with your raka, maka, 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 taka, maka, maka, hey, hey, father. <laughs> Demons have put you at bay. You can't enter. You can't plant a church there. Yeah. Then you come and sing. Guvuza giza si me shindwa vagina. Then you say that place we can't go. That place. Let, let's just stay here and sing. Guvuza giza. Guvu. What are you singing? What are you singing? Yeah. Yes, so if we are going to take responsibility like God has spoken to us, we are going to occupy until he comes. The word of God is so important that we should take the word of God, so we should esteem it so highly that we can stand on it, no matter what we do not understand. I've said this before, never give up what you know for what you do not understand. One thing I know is that he conquered them, made a public spectacle of them. Praise the Lord. There is one time I went, I went with Bright somewhere. We went to cast out demons from a guy. That guy was violent. That guy did things and did things and he even tore my pants. He tore my pants. Hey. Bright was behind me like a dog that is... <laughs> hey! We, yeah? <laughs> yeah. He's behind with his tail between his legs. It's just... So what do we do? So <laughs> I'm telling you that guy was... He, 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 he pulls the bed, he holds on the bed, and we are there sweating. The house is smelling of sweat. A very small house. So let me tell you, what, when people, what you hear me teach here, how I teach you that it is so easy. It is not because I've not had those experiences. I've had both and I know the better way. You, you, know, you know, many times when people come and, and they, 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 they hear how I talk, they say, oh, that pastor despises demons, he despises the devil. You are right. But, but, but. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you, that one you are right. Yes, so they say, oh, he despises it. It's because he doesn't know real spiritual warfare, my friend. Where haven't I been? Huh? I've already, I've, hey, hey. Yes, I've been in witchcraft. Yes, yeah. Kawede, yes. Kawede had witchcraft. Actually, there's a time I song about Kawede here, and somebody came and testified to me, like, Pastor, you need to go and do a crusade there. There's still a lot of witchcraft in Kawede. Yes. And I've been to worse places than Kawede. You see, that's why we want to plant a church in Ganzi. Yes. Because we have what works. Yes. So when you see us happy here and what, it is because it is so true. When we sing Guvuza Giza Zimeshindwa, we believe it. We believe it. It is so true. It is so true. It is so true. We believe it's not just a story. We are not going to throw away what we know because of what we do not know. Just because I went to Nyao House and they told me this is not how things work, I stuck to the Constitution still. You get what I mean? I knew this is what the Constitution of Kenya says. I knew I will get somebody who will follow the law. I'll get, I didn't throw it away and say now I should, I should do like they do. Yes. 
So because you, 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 you went somewhere and things were hard, now you think the devil has been in the gym. Is busy. You know, sometimes we act like the devil has taken steroids and eaten supplements and... and, 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 and and je- yes, yeah? <laughs> Uji power. He's taken Uji. <laughs> do, do you know Uji power? Any of you that knows Uji? <laughs> yeah? Pastor Isan Sally blessed us with Uji power. Five liters we have in our fridge. Uji power. <laughs> so when you see me preaching powerfully like this. <laughs> you know, so sometimes we act like the devil's power increases. Like there's a day he wakes up and maybe he works out better and he shows up and no. And the greatest trick of the devil is to see if the believers believe what the word says. Yeah. No, just think the devil went to attack Jesus. If I were the devil, I'm not saying I'm the devil. I can't be the devil. And I was going to attack Jesus. Of course, I would unleash my full arsenal on him. You get what I mean? Yeah, no reservation. You're going to attack Jesus. This is Jesus. These are not his disciples. You get what I mean? Yes, you don't bring small, small weapons. You don't bring, what, nine millimeter? What? No, you bring every, you know, those serious, serious RPGs and... Uh, those ones yes those ones you bring serious weapons and I'm sure the devil did that (laughs) artillery yes heavy artillery Arsenal has a powerful name Arsenal really believe they really believe in themselves you know, having such a name. <laughs> you know, yesterday in church when I was preaching, I was saying that, uh, I was telling you, have you ever had any lottery winner who has become a millionaire? So Daniel sent me a message and told me it's because they normally bet on Arsenal. <laughs> now, if you're if you an Arsenal fan, we love you. We Actually, we even have leaders who support Arsenal. Ta- Talmon, wave to the people. Now... <laughs> <laughs> Those are men of faith. So even in this church, we <laughs> yes, even Wanja, yeah, very key people in this ministry that support Arsenal. So we, 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 Alex, yeah, head of protocol, he supports Arsenal. Yeah. So we, 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 we have nothing against us. We sympathize with them, but we, we don't, we, we don't. <laughs> yeah, so if you come, if he's coming to attack Jesus, I'm sure he brought out his best. But what did Jesus do? It is written. It is written. It is written. The devil wanted to know, does he really believe it? And it is the same way he went to Adam. And Adam didn't really believe it. Yeah. He, did God really say this? Ah, no, that's not what he meant. Then, and Adam started doubting the word. And that, that is what the devil does when you cast out demons or when you deal with principalities and what? Yes. He, 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 he tries to show you, are you really sure there is enough power in just, 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 just rebuking in the name of Jesus? Don't you think you need to do something extra? He said, devil, you're right. Devil, you're right. Then he will. But if he realizes that you can be like Jesus, he said, it is written. They shall, ex-, that word is, Expel the word used there, the Greek word is expel. They shall expel demons, not chase. I told you what chasing means. Yeah, we are not demon chasers. Chasing means you're failing to catch it, you're running after. Yeah, it's the devil that should be running away, not you running after the devil. You're not a demon chaser. Praise the Lord. So it's important for us to know the word of God. Let me give you some few scriptures here. Yeah, but Joshua 1, Joshua 1, 1, 1 to 8. This is a portion that we've read many times. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake 
unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Now hear that. These are serious words that God is saying. God does not mess around with his words. Do you know that? Yeah, God does not joke. His words, are not, he, he can be humorous, but his words are not, are not, they are serious. Yeah? They are very serious. Imagine, just think about that. Think, think about how serious God's words are. You know, that would change how we live. If we just believed he's very serious with his words. He's telling him, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. If Joshua was defeated somewhere, the problem was Joshua. God had already given a word. If Joshua came into Jericho and saw big men and got scared because of the big men, it's because he's relegated the word of God. Because he is to stick to the word, not what he sees. Did God know those giants are going to be there? Yet he still spoke. It is just like Jesus. Jesus told the disciples, cross over, I'll meet you the other side. When they were going to cross Galilee, Lake Galilee, was it Lake Galilee? You remember? And a storm came and tossed them. And you know, they are dying. They, 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 they feel like they are dying. They are... When Jesus stopped the storm, what did he do? He rebuked them. You would think he would sympathize. But why would he rebuke them? Didn't you hear me say, let's meet the other side? <laughs> so however big the storm comes, if you listen to his word and realize that his word is serious, you're like, if he said we are meeting the other side, maybe it's the storm carrying us there. Maybe I don't know. Maybe the boat will be broken. But if we are dead, there's no way we can meet him. So we are meeting him the other side. We are meeting him the other side. And what has God spoken to you? You see, that's why many times God, you're believing God for a job. He speaks to you clearly. You even come and tell us what he's spoken to you. Then you get at the place of work and your boss frustrates you in the first two weeks. I passed, I think I should quit. Didn't you hear that we should meet the other side? Have you seen the great things that he wants you to do there? Praise the Lord. You know, someone one time asked me, wow. This ministry has stood since you came to Nairobi. How have you? You've stood here. You've never quit. Because, you know, during these nine years I've been in Nairobi, of course, I know a number of ministries. I know more ministries than the years I have been here that have come and gone. But is there are things that God has spoken to us as a ministry. There are things he has spoken that I have not yet come to see. So when hardship comes, I'm like, this has not even yet happened. Hardship doesn't mean you quit. Hardship doesn't mean you give up. And that is how God normally encourages us. He gives us a word. He doesn't give us the process right away. Because if most of us saw the process, we would even never say yes. Yes. Imagine if he came to Mary and said, Mary, Mary, you're going to conceive and Joseph will run away from you for some time, but he will come back. Then Herod will be after you and your baby. You will have to flee to Egypt, but you will come back. The <laughs> I doubt Mary's words would be, let it be to your servant as... <laughs> Maybe the words would have changed. But I'm unavailable. Muteja, Wanambari... Uliopiga hapatikani kwa sasa. You know, but he says, this one, his name shall be called Jesus. He shall save my people. He speaks big things about Jesus. Now, Mary, 
in Luke chapter Luke chapter 2 in Luke chapter 2 the angels appeared to the disciples and the disciples had great things and the disciples not the disciples the shepherds and the shepherds went to see Jesus baby Jesus born and they spoke great things about this child that was born and the bible says Mary pondered these things Mary kept these things to her great things that were said about Jesus that is verse 19 but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart pondered them in her heart now scholars believe that Joseph died very early he didn't see the adult years of Jesus and there is a prophecy if you see is it the angel speaking to Mary but there is a prophet where he's speaking about the sorrow that Mary would go through. That Mary buried her husband, buried this son in one lifetime that Mary saw all this pain. You can imagine the pain. Yet, she pondered on those words. I believe, this is, this is my assumption, I believe that the words he had about the Messiah before he was born sustained him sustained her because I always wondered why is it that at the wedding at Cana Jesus has never performed a miracle never the most spectacular thing that has happened is that the Holy Spirit descended as a dove upon him that's the only spectacular thing that had happened yet Mary comes and asks Jesus they've run out of wine. Jesus has never sold wine. Hmm? He has no wine and spirits shop. You get what I mean? He's not, he, he, he's not part of the committee for the wedding. And Mary just sees people working, distributing the wine, it's out, and Mary goes to Jesus and says, they've run out of wine. And Jesus says, what does that have to do with me? Exactly. Jesus was right. I don't sell wine. I've never done a miracle in my life. What am I going to do? And Mary does not listen to Jesus. Those are some of the times God was happy that somebody didn't obey Jesus. <laughs> Mary says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. How did she even know he was going to tell them to do Yes. She pondered on the words that were said about this baby for 30 years. You ponder on the word. You meditate on the word. A time comes. That word, you, because you see, the moment you receive the word, it is like conception. You're pregnant with the word. A time comes where that word is at full term. You know, when a lady gets to full term, you can't tell her you've not yet updated your Facebook stories. You, you, you know, you, 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 you can't tell her this hospital is not so clean. You can't tell her, Shh, yeah, you can't tell her we are in the car. You can't tell her there are men around. You can't tell her, yeah. You know, before, be, before she's pregnant, she can say, nah, never. There will never be a male doctor in the world. There will never be, you know, hey, I know there will only be ladies, nuns, actually. Once she's ready, it is full time, she calls the male doctor, doctor, come and check. Because it's full time. Mary pondered on the words of how great Jesus would be. After 30 years, the word had come to full time. No matter what Jesus said, the word had to deliver. The word had to give birth. Say whatever he tells you to do. And Jesus even says, it is before my time. In other words, there was an appointed time for Jesus to do miracles. Mary caused her to do miracles before the appointed time. If you are a person of the word, some things will happen before the appointed time. You see, that, 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 is, how, that is how we see healings. Because see, many people are like, in God's timing, he will heal me. But you see, we meditate on the word so much. By his stripes, I was healed. It is in past tense. It is, and eventually, you, 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 you know that this is the right time. You just know that this is the right time. There is no more right time. 
The right time is when that word becomes ready in you. You meditate on it. So if we are going to influence wherever we are going, we are going to do great things wherever God has called us to occupy, the word of God is going to be very key. And the word has to be above our experiences. We are charismatic people. We are Pentecostal people. We believe in the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Let's not put them above the word. Now, let the word not substitute them, but let's not put them above the word. Now, there is, there is that problem also. You know, there is a sect that for us, we are for the word, we are for the word, without any manifestations. Those are the ones he rebuked in John chapter 5, verse 39. Such are the scriptures, for by them you think you have eternal life. You do not come to me. Don't those very scriptures testify of me? So the Pharisees were sticklers of the word. They didn't want any experience, and they missed him. Jesus is telling them, if, if the word, if you really believe the word, it has to give you an experience. It gives you an experience. And eventually, there should be an experience. But you can't put the experience before the word. You can't put an experience. You get what I mean? When people, when he was calling people, there is no one that God used in the Bible without giving them an experience. No one. No one. They had an experience. Go look up. Moses had the burning bush. Noah had his, his experience, created this ark, water came, rain came, a hundred and what days, you know, Abraham, all these people, the disciples, he told them, tarry in Jerusalem until you endure with power. Don't just go with theory. So as you get the word of God, meditate on it, take the word of God, meditate on it, meditate on it. Things are going to come. In, in Mark chapter 4, he says, that the, 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 word, the, the ones that fell among the thorns are the ones that get the word of God. They're excited like today, Monday. Wow, I have the word of God. Then he says, but the cares of this world choke the word. Those are the thorns. So you receive a word today. You're going to be healing the sick. You're never going to be poor. Yes, you're going to be wealthy. You will find the gospel. You will help many orphans. And the next day, your landlord says, I'm kicking you out. Those are the thorns. So are you still going to hold on that word? Imagine the time when Joseph was dying, as the scholars say. Imagine the time Joseph was dying. And this little 11-year-old Jesus, who is meant to heal people, is there. Imagine what the mother is feeling. This healer who made people talk about me, how I had fornicated before my marriage and what? And now my husband is dying and he can't help me. That's a thorn. That was a, th there were many opportunities for Mary not to believe in Jesus. I'm sure there are times he wanted the, she wanted the Messiah to show up and the Messiah didn't show up. You get what I mean? But because she, stuck, she pondered on those things, she didn't push them away. She pondered. So sometimes you receive the word of God and man, it is alive at that moment. But what happens after that moment? Can you ponder on it even when the feelings are gone, when the excitement is gone, when the emotions are gone? You go back and meditate on it, meditate on it, meditate on it. A time comes where it is so sure. And that is what I was telling you even about spiritual authority. That is how I have grown to believe what I believe about spiritual authority. Because with a lot of spiritual warfare, casting out demons, whatever we did, many times it caused me to question what I believe. So if I'm praying in the name of Jesus, why isn't this demon living? Why isn't this? And you know, you question. And many times the devil makes you question, question until you throw it away. Because the devil has no authority over you. And what the devil does, he traps you. You get what I mean? Have you seen people who, one time we were signing a contract with some, uh, we wanted a certain property, so we are signing contracts. So these people normally have big contracts of which they know that if they land on somebody like me, sanguine and what, <laughs> you're not going to read all of them. You're going to sign very fast. That's why nowadays at least we, we use RISPA helps us to read through and <laughs> get, before I sign anything, I say, hey, lawyer, read, 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 read. And she will read and she will come back with things. But you see, sometimes they, they, they take advantage of you. They know most people don't read. So that's how they take advantage. Even social media. Most of us agree to, yet we don't agree. You see how almost all believers here are liars? Yeah. You, 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 you know, the, the, the app asks you something. You just scroll down to agree, and you click I agree. <laughs> agree. And you've not read. What are you agreeing to? <laughs> eh? Then later you complain, they are taking our privacy. They, are... they will say you agreed. But you see, they put them in small letters and make them many so that you agree without reading. So that in case you ever take them to court, there is proof that you agreed. 
Yeah? And the, so, they, they, so because this person does not have power to use your money to buy land, to, to, to sell you their land, they don't have the power to just make you buy their land. You get what I mean? So if they can make you sign a contract which you don't fully understand, now that's how they get power. You, you get what I mean? Because you'll go to court and you realize it's futile, you can't win. You signed the things. That's what the devil does. The devil, the devil has no right to take anything. He can't. He knows it was, Jesus said, all authority. When he says all authority, it means somebody is deprived. They are left with none. Zero. Zuch. Ndunge. Eh? You said Ndunge. Ndunge. Ndunge is a person a kamba, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, one time my brother-in-law posted his, his motorbike. So he called his motorbike. What did he call it? Yeah? Yeah? Ndunge. He called it Ndunge. Yeah? Nduku. No, he called it Nduku, yes. So he made a Facebook post in Nduku. So I went to my wife and I'm like, oh, some motorbike is called Nduku in, in Kamba. <laughs> She laughed at me. What's that he said? My brother in law said he's Nduku, so he calls his motorbike Nduku. So I thought that's what it's called. So, <laughs> guys, let me finish. So, <laughs> so, this is what the devil does the devil ministers questions to you, confusion. And he, 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 he traps you by making you answer the question. You get what I mean? You see wh wh why they normally say you have a right to stay silent? Because you see, in that brutality at times as you're being handled by the police and what, you know, you can say things and they will say, he actually said this. Because you see, they can't make you say that, but you're trapped by that. And so, oh, see me, me, even me, nili, li, piwa, ni, ni, li, ni, li. Then they're like, he said he was paid, and they had their recorder. Ali lipwa, eh? lipwa, 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 lipwa. Ali lipwa. You know, they will say, he, he was paid. They will say that. Because in that moment of tension, you uttered that. So you give them a chance to prosecute you using that. Of which, if you kept silent, maybe you would be safer. You get what I mean? So it's the same thing with the devil. He doesn't. And that is why you see that he always asks questions. Because he, the devil can't come directly and say, no, you're going to, if you, you eat it, you're going to be like, wise like God? No, he can't. He doesn't have authority over them. But he says, did God really say so that you answer and you are held accountable to your word? That's the same thing. It comes to Jesus. He asks questions. So, you're, you, you, you're praying. Let me say you're praying. You're dealing with a sickness. You're dealing with a spiritual issue. What, what question does he minister to you? Don't you think this one requires you to call pastor? Why? Because he can't tell you that this you must call pastor. Yes. Stage four. <laughs> He's a stage four demon. So you, you, in your mind, you're the one who concludes this one requires pastor. And now the devil relaxes. He says, bring me juice. <laughs> this one is not happening. Pastor is not here. Yes. Because he just wanted you to empower him. He wanted you to give him the right. And that is why the Bible says that you are ensnared by your own words. The devil wants you to speak. He wants you to speak contrary. And that's why I said, in faith, we should exercise our right to be silent. I had this testimony from Creflo Dollar. In the last few years, he went through a lot. Cancer, shingles, what, like a lot. But when he was diagnosed with cancer, prostate cancer, he didn't tell his wife, he didn't tell anyone, because he said, I did not know what to say at that time that would not contradict my faith. So he left, he actually went to, I think that's in Atlanta where their headquarters is. He flew to New York. You know, where there is no one who knew that he had gone to hospital or something like that. He went and preached in their church in New York. He went to, he went into, he, he, went, he, was, he was on the board for all Roberts University. He called, he called for all the books that had been written on healing. And they gave him those books. He was in, in his house for, is it for a week, 
just reading those books and meditating. He didn't want to be out there where he would say, eh, in case I die, in case, no, because now the devil would use that. So he said, I di- uh, and, until I could say the right thing, until I could say cancer was defeated 2,000 years ago, until I could say I shall live and not die, I'm taking advantage of my right to stay silent. Mary pondered on the word. Mary pondered on what she was told about Jesus. And she was able to usher him into his miracle ministry. Imagine. 30 years of waiting, that's a long time. Some of us, it's just three months at a job. And we feel like, that job we prayed and you are even asked, are you sure this is where God wants to work? Yes, but pastor, they don't give me fair. They don't give me this. They don't give me this. Go back to the one who told you. Did he know they would not? Go back. Take his word seriously. Praise the Lord. That is how we are going to occupy. We need our constitution. We need the word of God. Otherwise, experiences will lead us. And if we are led by experiences, the devil will win. If we're just led by experience, oh, this time this happened. Oh, if this happens, this is what you do. Oh, when you have a dream where there is a blue color, you know that is this. When you have, you know, a lot of what goes on dream interpretation, vision interpretation. Aka means this. Aka can mean aka. A dog can be a dog. Oh, you dream a dog, it means immorality. You see what I'm saying? Somebody had a dream and God told them that. And now they are teaching it as doctrine. And that's what God told them. It is so sad. Let's stick to the word of God. Like you sang in high school. That's what you should be singing every day. Neno la buana. Bright here, that who used to be off key. <laughs> uh, let's get up on our feet. Now, I, I want you to take two minutes and I want you to thank God for His Word. Thank God that there is no monopoly on His Word. We, we, we all have access. Imagine if His Word was just kept in the Vatican, that we, we only need, that's where we can get access to it. You know how, how we would be so helpless? But we have exposure to the word. You can have four Bible versions on your phone. You can, like we have the word. They, we have the word. We are going to succeed. You're all going to succeed. Because we have the word. We have the word. We have the word. There is no more. You don't need to go to a certain man of God for you to have access to the word. You don't need somebody to, no. You have the word. Thank him that you have the word. Tell him, Father, thank you. If there is a particular situation, you know right now, maybe something going on in your family, something going on, thank him that the word is above that situation and you have the word and you can claim the word. Yes. Ministry, you want ministry to grow. God has given you the word. Yes. Business, God has given. There is a word. Parenting, there is a word. Yes, he's given us the word. He's given us the, we are so blessed to have the word. Thank you for your word, Father. Your word, your word is not a joke. Your word is not mere stories. Peter said, we have not believed cunningly devised fables. These were not cunningly devised fables. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Yes. And we all have access. It is not for some mighty prophets only. It's not for some mighty apostles only. It is for every child of God. It is even available for the non-believers. We have your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, with our heads bowed, aren't every head bowed? Now, if you are here and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this word will be called to you. It will be foolishness, like he says, to them that are perishing. It's foolishness. It will not make sense. Because you have to become a son to understand the language of the Father. If you're here and you've never received him as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity. And you may say, oh, pastor, you don't know how much of a sinner I am. I'm a very bad person. You just don't know how much Jesus suffered on that cross for you. You would never say how much of a sinner you are. He paid the price. He took it all. You may also be here 
and you were born again, you got born again, you're on fire for God, but you grew cold at some time. You know that you're not where you are, you are meant to be. You grew cold, you stopped praying, you stopped loving the word, you stopped going to church, you stopped fellowshipping, you just grew cold. At times it is the cares of the world. You got a job that was so busy and you forgot about God. Oh, your world was rocked. You lost a loved one. You lost a job. You lost a marriage. And your world was rocked. Your life seemed to be shattered. And you walked away on God. He still loves you too. He loves you. Like the story of that prodigal son. The father always came out to see when is my son coming home. The father has always been coming to see when are you coming home. And today he's excited that you've come home. You're coming home. There is an opportunity. He's there longing. He's here longing today. Your sins were paid for fully. Hell is real and heaven is real. Many people don't talk about hell today. But Jesus spoke about hell more than he spoke about heaven. He did not speak about hell to scare people. He spoke about hell to warn people. Hell is real. If nothing ever works out in this life, at least don't go to hell. Yes. If you say, oh, okay, I wasn't healed. I wasn't promoted. I didn't get the house I want. Don't go to hell at least. Receive your Savior today and be sure of a place in heaven because it is only by faith in him not by works. You can never pray enough to become good. You can never read the Bible enough to become good. You can never give enough charity to become good. You need to be born again. You need to put your faith in him and what he did on that cross. So if you're here and you're in any of those categories, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ or you gave your life to Jesus Christ but you grew cold at some time. I want to shoot that hand up right now, quickly. You say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me today. I want to come to this Jesus. Lift that hand quickly. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Yes, thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Ashes, help those people. Let them come to the front. Any other person, you're out there. Lift that hand quickly right now. This is your time. This is your moment. Yes, ashes. Where, where are more ashes? There are people here. Yes, if you're here and you, you, you want to receive him, you want me to pray with you, this is the most important moment of this service. Yes, lift that hand where you are. Any other person? Yes, follow them. Come to the front. Come and receive Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Come receive Jesus. He loves you. Any, yes, come, come, come. He loves you. He is here for you today. He loves you. 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 You're starting a brand new life today. He loves you. Any other person that may be out there, don't step back there. Come. Come to Jesus. The price was paid. Yes. Thank you. He loves you. He loves you. This is what we came for. This is what we are here for. He loves you. The Bible says that one person who returns, heaven throws a party. Heaven jubilates because of one person. You are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That must be a big party. That must be a grand celebration. And if there is any other person, run to the front before I start to pray. Run to the front. Come to the front. Let me pray with you. Don't step back there. He loves you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. The price was paid for you. Come and join the family of God. Come and join the family of Jesus. Now for you who have come, I want to put, put your right hand on your chest. Put your right hand on your chest. Lift your head. I don't want you to bow your head. This is a grand entry. Let the devil feel it. Let him know that you're running away from him. You see, like when you're graduating, you don't go to receive your diploma or your degree with your head bowed. You raise your head. Let everyone see that you made it, you studied. Man, this is a triumphant entry. You're coming from darkness, coming into the kingdom of light. Yes. I know maybe you feel sorry that you didn't trust him early, but he wipes away your tears. He loves you. Now I want to repeat after me. Let's repeat this with them. And to repeat after me. Repeat all the air that is in your lungs. All the breath that you have in your lungs. Repeat this prayer after me. And to say, Lord Jesus. No, 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 no. We can do better than that. I, I, I want your, 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 your strength to match your faith. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. 
Thank you for coming to me. Thank you for your word. I've heard. I like it. You are wonderful. You died on the cross. The cross that was meant for me. You became sin. You are forsaken. Your disciples hid from you. And yet it was my sin that you carried. It was for me that you suffered. And died a cruel death. Jesus, I'm sorry for not putting my trust in you earlier. Today, the Holy Spirit has drawn me to you. And I say yes to you. I believe you paid the price. A price I could never pay on my own. You died for me. Today, I choose you. I surrender to you. Be Lord of my life. Come into my life. I belong to you. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your righteousness. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for calling me. I declare today that I am yours and you are mine. I declare that I am forgiven. I am loved. I am forgiven. Fully forgiven. Totally free. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus, thank you for saving me. I am a child of God. I am born again. I am home now. Free at last. Free at last. I belong to you, Jesus. I belong to you, Jesus. I am yours. Thank you, Father. Thank you for saving Jesus to save my life. 